Do you know where you are? Of course. I'm in New York City, and I'm on my favorite show, The Tonight Show. With the rising technological advancement in space exploration and societal improvements, it would not come as a shock for several inventors to use such technological knowledge to cater to the entertainment and needs of human beings. With it comes the introduction of female pleasure robots and humanoids who are programmed to perform specific tasks under hospitality, food service, and even entertainment. With current scientists working twice as hard in changing the world through science, the world is finally near to setting a platform for the rise of female pleasure robots. But before we start, for everyone who's new to our channel, hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we fill you in on every thrilling discovery and mind-blowing insights in the world of robots, AIs, and future technology. So consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification for a ton of exciting robot content coming your way. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. In 1495, Leonardo da Vinci designed one of the earliest versions of humanoids, which were in the form of a suit of armor that could sit, stand, and walk, among other things. It even moved as though it were a genuine person inside. Now at the dawn of the 21st century, this notion from science fiction has become a part of our everyday lives. The first human-like and lifelike androids were created by researchers in Korea and Japan. Despite the fact that their first models were humanoid robots with feminine bodies, the scientists mimic masculine movement patterns. Certain elements, like sensors and actuators, allow humanoids to move, communicate, and perform actions. Humanoid robots are typically thought to be robots that are structurally similar to humans. They have a head, torso, arms, and legs, which isn't always the case, as some humanoids don't look exactly like humans. Humanoids are mainly either androids or are patterned after only a few key human components, such as the human head. They have sensors that let them sense their surroundings. These humanoids function through specific qualities, and an android is a humanoid robot made to appear like a male person. Gynoids, on the other hand, look like female humans. In order to distinguish between male and female robots, new terminology based on the structure of the word android was coined gynoid and fembot. While the word gynoid was coined by novelist Gwyneth Jones in Divine Endurance published in 1985 to describe a robot slave who was assessed solely on her appearance, the term fembot gained popularity with the television series The Bionic Woman in the 70s. From recent research, men and male robots are viewed as more human in the negative aspects of the subtle measures of humanness, whereas women and female robots are perceived as more human on most of the subtle and all of the obvious and implicit measures of humanness. These findings may hint at a new possible reason why individuals prefer female intelligent computers over their male counterparts. Female intelligent machines are more strongly connected with humanness. Some gynoid robots have grown fairly popular due to their human-like appearance and efficiency, including the following examples, Ever 1 and Ever 2. Ever 1 was the first gynoid to be released, debuting in 2003 at the International Robot Exhibition in Tokyo, costing $321,000. Her name is a mix of the biblical heroine Eve and the letter R for robot. For designers, a group of South Korean scientists affiliated with the Korea University of Science and Technology sculpted her face to resemble a mix of two prominent Korean actresses and a singer's torso, but the precise ladies used as models were never revealed. Everyone was able to imitate human emotions including joy, sadness, rage, and surprise. She knew 400 Korean and English words, allowing her to respond to inquiries vocally as well as with 15 various facial expressions. Ever 2, her replacement, was unveiled at Robot World 2006 in Seoul with few improvements. Actroid and Repli R1 Up next, Actroid, a gynoid modeled on the appearance of ordinary Japanese young women, was released in 2004 by Japanese scientists. Repli R1 was then consequently designed to seem like her five-year-old Japanese sister. Actroid was introduced during Expo 2005 in HI Japan with the goal of assisting visitors in acquiring information about specific sites and activities. Eiko In 2009, Eiko, a robot that can react to physical stimuli and imitate pain, was featured in the Daily Mail. 
She is said to assist those who have had limbs amputated to receive lifelike artificial limbs. She was inspired by Japanese animation, particularly Chobits made in 2002, which is a gynoid as one of its key characters, and her switch on-off button is conveniently located in her crotch. Kamotoroid TV Presenter Around 2014 in Japan, the Kamotoroid TV Presenter was created. Her name is a combination of the Japanese term for Komodoro and Android. She is multilingual and has the ability to read the news and provide weather forecasts in real time. She has been assigned to the Emerging Science and Innovation Museum in Tokyo, where she is now employed. Jaya Jaya In 2016, a team from China's University of Science and Technology worked on this humanoid robot for three years. She can maintain a conversation, but her movement is restricted and her speech is stilted. She does not yet have a complete range of expressions, but the creators intend to continue working on her and instill learning capacities in her. Despite the fact that her voice and language should be improved, she is ultimately realistic in the eyes of the general public. Sophia and Eliza on October 11, 2017, Safia made her first appearance at the United Nations. She was given Saudi Arabian citizenship, making her the first humanoid robot to be awarded citizenship. It was Hanson Robotics that built Safia, a robot that can do a wide range of human tasks. She is claimed to be capable of creating up to 50 facial expressions and can convey sentiments in a variety of ways. She has incredibly expressive eyes and has a similar human-like sense of humor. She was meant to resemble the late British actress Audrey Hepburn. In January 2018, Sophia was given functioning legs and the capacity to walk. Sophia's lifelike scan and ability to imitate more than 60 facial expressions have also been praised by CNBC. Sophia is similar to Eliza, computer software that was one of the earliest attempts to simulate a human dialogue. Like a chatbot, the software has been trained to respond to certain inquiries or phrases with pre-written replies. These responses, which include standard answers to inquiries like, is the door open, are designed to provide the impression that the robot can comprehend dialogue, robot shallow. Finally, in 2021, Dinesh Patel, a computer science instructor at Kendria Vidyalaya, IIT Bombay, constructed the first female humanoid robot in India, Shalu. Shalu, a humanoid robot from India, can communicate in at least 47 languages, including those from India and other foreign countries. With the aid of artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques, robot Shalu can respond in every language found in the learned dataset. Face recognition technology allows the robot to recognize individuals and remember them after meeting them. Object recognition technology can assist Jalu in identifying various things in any setting. The notion that the ideal woman is created artificially isn't new. In fact, it's a cliché. From Gigolo Joe in AI artificial intelligence to Pris and Blade Runner, there are many examples of androids and gynoids being represented as sexual gadgets in science fiction. In fact, another American artist is currently making waves in the erotica business by creating lifelike love dolls. Matt McMullen began his career as a female figure sculptor and is now the CEO of Real Doll. After being asked several times whether he would transform his posable mannequins into sex dolls, McMullen took the move from passion to business. As a result, he discovered that there was a market for it. McMullen told the New York Times that the goal is to produce something that would stimulate people on an emotional and intellectual in addition to physical level. In fact, Real Doll's leader feels that making her hips move by herself is less crucial than creating the idea that the doll is enjoying the engagement. With all of these advancements, the issue becomes whether Real Dolls will dare to venture into the uncanny valley with its dolls. But Mullen claims that this is not something he wants for his dolls. In fact, he claims in an interview with the New York Times that even the greatest of his dolls will still look like dolls. This technological development draws on what distinguishes humans from computers in order to better comprehend the fundamental foundations of AI's pervasive female gendering. Some experts suggest that female gendering of AI objects makes them appear more human and more likely to address our particular requirements, since feelings are at the very core of our humanity, and women are viewed as more likely to have feelings. 
However, by communicating the impression that women are products and simple instruments created to serve their owners' demands, this process of changing women into objects may lead to their objectification. This might lead to increased objectification and decumanization of women in the non-digital world. Where do you think this development in creating female pleasure robots or gynoids would lead humanity? Do you agree about the sexist implications of using women as models for the most popular robots in the world? Share your thoughts with us and the rest of the community by telling your insights in the comment section below. Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel to get more information and updates about the latest technological advancements and innovations. Thank you for your watching.